Good morning, FCF. And I don't know why I say good morning to you, because you might be watching this at any time of day. But anyway, good day to you, FCF. <laughs> uh, we're in our eighth day, going through the book of Ephesians, and we're in chapter 1. We're going to pick up in verse 19. We're going to go 19 through 21. Now, 19 is, is vitally connected to what went on in 18 and 17, which was this prayer. Paul prayed that the uh, Spirit of God will give the Ephesians an expanded capacity to understand the reality of our inheritance that awaits us, that God has for us, as well as what a treasure that reunion is going to be for God himself. So he's picking up now in verse 19, it's kind of connected to that thought, and his incompar incomparably great power for us who believe. Like I'm going to read you 18 just to give you context. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his, meaning God's, glorious inheritance in the saints. We're, we're an inheritance to him, verse 19. And his incomparably great power for us who believe or who trust, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and he seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. So there's an awful lot here, here to unpack. Uh, the first part is Paul's prayer is wanting to bring an awareness of the vast power of God that is operative in the ordinary Christian. Now, th this power of God, uh, in chapter 3, he's going to emphasize this again, that, that his power is working in us so that he can do in us and through us more than we can even begin to imagine. But this power of God, it's not something that's generally speaking tang tangible for, for us to be aware of. In other words, we might feel very weak, very normal. We may be faltering at times as we're seeking to walk with Christ. But the way this power, this tremendous power shows itself is look at yourself at the start of your Christian journey. If, if, you're, if you're in a consistent relationship with Christ, you're going to be moving forward, you're going to be growing, you're going to be developing. So you take a snapshot, as it were, a spiritual snapshot of yourself at the beginning of your journey, take another snapshot three years in, take another snapshot, you know, five years and seven and so forth, and then take one 25 years up the road, and you will see the tremendous power of God that is at work in us. It is this gradual, persistent transformation of character where we go from being self-absorbed human beings uh, plagued by you know sin and shame and guilt and fear and bad habits and bad perspectives to these beings that are more and more seeing life the way God sees it uh, experiencing God's kind of life within us learning to live the way he lives and love the way he loves and the transformation is is very true it's very real and it's extraordinary. So he compares it to the power that God released when he brought the, the dead body of Jesus back into existence. So for us, it's saying that the things that might feel impossible for us when we start to look at ourselves compared to Christ, knowing that we're meant to become a Christ-like version of ourselves, the, the developmental process can at times feel impossible to us, look impossible, but it's not. It looked impossible for a dead body, the dead body of Jesus, to be brought back to life. But not only did uh, the Father bring Jesus back to life, but he then exalted him above all the powers, not, not just earthly powers, but powers and thrones and dominions and governmental structures in the angelic realms that we can't yet see. So it's saying the same thing to us. Paul is saying, man, I want you guys to know that God is so at work in you that though you may feel that you're faltering and you're... You're wondering if you'll ever really grow and you'll ever, you know, make some progress in becoming Christ-like. God is going to see to it. He's at work in you. He's going to persist in that work. And not only will you become transformed, but he will elevate you to a place uh, in, in the universe, in eternity, of leadership that you can't quite comprehend right now. He's going to take not just Christ to be exalted, but because we are his body, we are his family, we, we are vitally connected to him. We are going to be his exalted leadership community for all eternity. Now, we don't, we don't know what God's plans are in eternity. We don't know what his developmental uh, plans and purposes may be. But we do know, the scripture says, he's going to take ordinary people like us, faltering people, people that get so down sometimes because we take two steps forward and three steps back that we were tempted to quit. 
He's going to take us and, as it were, not just raise us from the dead, but he's going to exalt us to be those that eternally rule and reign and lead with the sacrificial love of Jesus for all eternity. So Paul wants these thoughts to, to be in our minds, and, and when they are there, they start to crystallize our new sense of identity. They start to give us um, a confidence to walk through the circumstances of this present world in which we're, we're not recognized and not generally respected, and yet to have a, a sense of self-worth that no circumstance, or no insult for that matter, can uh, in any way infringe upon. So, um, as we, we get ready to take this journey further, he's, he's next going to take this idea of the power of God operative in Christ, raising him from the dead and exalting him that's now operating in us, and he's going to connect it to the fact that, that we're vitally connected to Christ as members of his body. So we'll look on that tomorrow.